Hey, what's going on with it once again? Ladies and gentlemen, fanboys and fangirls especially. This is the one, the only Mr. Criticism Guy 2009, a.k.a. Nintendo Sony Free 2011. Sorry if I sound a tiny bit out of breath. I just came back from the gym a little bit too, not too long ago. So, uh, without further ado, and I'm not going to do any slides. I'm just going to show you the pictures one by one. So, hopefully, right at the title up above and below, this is the top 10 best anime fight scenes ever. I'm not sure which specific episodes these belong to, so I'm just going to be completely random order. I actually got this idea from um, 3TR Topic Review when he was doing like um, the top 10 best animes ever. But it wasn't the fight scenes, it was just regular stuff. But shout out to him, he's a really awesome guy. I know he subscribed to my channel. Thank you very much, man. You're really amazing. Hopefully I'll get a thousand subs like you one day because you worked your butt off for that one. I know I will too. So uh, without further ado, and this, hopefully you see this thing pretty well, uh, like I can. But um, Legend of Fucking Korra, this is the number 10 best fight scene of all time. And um, best anime, pretty much. So, uh, the reason why this is a really awesome um, fight scenes, I love the choreographics and everything, how this all goes down, how the animation is. This is fucking epic as hell. I've watched the first two seasons, I haven't seen the third one at all, but I know it's about the spirit world and stuff. Unfortunately, I'm not very familiar with that one, sadly. So, hopefully, I'll be able to start watching those again if I have enough time on Nicktoons or whatever, or any other internet service provider instead of just TV, because a lot of people usually use the internet these days. Not very many I use TV, but if they do, you're a troop of mine. <laughs> and the reason why I really like the fight scenes in this thing, they use all the, she uses all four of the elements. She uses the element of water, fire, wind, and um, earth. That's what she does, you know, earthquakes and shit. And I remember the first episode, and they showed Legend of Korra after, like, um, the whole Avatar, The Last Airbender was out. Um, the reason why I like this very much was because, um, <laughs> very fucking awesome shit. You know, I love the storyline for it. And I'm just probably going to go up why it's a really good anime. The reason why it's a good anime, really good, decent, like, um, reviews I've gotten on it. I mean, it has gotten on its own, obviously. Um, the voice acting is really awesome. I love how all the fan out, even the fan service, how they did with Korra. It's fucking epic, amazing as hell. Highly suggest you check this anime out because it's a very amazing, beautifully, well-drawn-out, well-detailed anime. Definitely highly suggest you check this shit out, either if it's on Netflix or just on Nick Jr. Mm, not Nick Jr., any of the other ones, but let's get into number nine real quick. Um, the last fight for this one, I already talked about this before about six, seven months earlier on my Nintendo Free channel and over here too as well. It is um, Panty and Fucking Stocking. I know most of you guys aren't familiar with this already. This has been out since 2010. And then the English translation was 2011, later on about three years ago now, almost four. But uh, yeah, the reason why this is a really awesome scene with Garter Bell, not Garter Bell, yes, is that black guy Garter Bell was actually played by Christopher Sabat. But that still boggles my fucking mind. How in the hell this should even happen? And this, yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is actually considered a fucking anime. If you can believe that, the only part I don't believe is anime for is when they do their transformation, their hot ass sex appeal, and the hentai shit. Which, you no, know, I, I was still into a lot back in the days. Once in a while, I'll still be into it. Not as much as I was back when I was in high school and shit. That was my shit back in the day. And it still is now, just not as much as it used to be, you know. Got priorities and preferences to do, do you know. But other than that, the reason why I like this one, though, I think his name was Corset versus Garter Belt. And the reason why this fight was really awesome, unfortunately, Garter Belt dies in the action scene, as most of you can see on the next page. And I'm about to post up right here. Hopefully you guys get a good look at that. After that, he gets killed, he gets stabbed in the heart or whatever. And uh, he dies and he ends up saying, oh my god, like an... Japanese, he's like, oh, my God, and like something like that. No offense to Japanese people, you know, I love you guys. Fucking awesome. You got the beautiful, hot-ass fucking Asian girls out there. But other than that, the reason why it's really fucking sad and epic at the same time, he just does all his moves with, like, his afro and stuff. It's kind of like bo 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 If any of you guys remember that shitty-ass anime, I didn't really like it too much. It was fucking boring. One of the very few animes I like. There's only, like, 10 or 15% of it. I don't like the other 85% of anime I'm still a huge fanboy of. Same with the manga and shit. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much why I like number eight. As number nine, excuse me, for, um, Garterbell versus them. There was nothing with Panty Stocking involved in this until after Garterbell dies. So, if you want to learn more about that, you can check that out. And the next one I'm going to talk about, another 90s, really awesome, fucking amazing, badass, um, anime. One of the first animes I actually saw after I saw Speed Racer and, um, Pokemon and I think Gundam Sea, which is going to be on here in a minute. I think it's going to be number four on the list. So coming in number eight is Tenshi Muyo, the one scene where they all fight in the Star Galaxy or whatever. There's just like four or six different like type of trilogies towards um Tenshi Muyo in the series from Tenshi Masaki. I don't know who the English translator was, but really awesome. Kudos to him. 
I think it was like 95, 96. So I was like around 7, 8 years old when that shit came out. Or 6, 7 years old. I don't know. But the reason why I thought those fucking beautiful, amazing, well detailed, besides it wouldn't be the first animes on Tsunami, because the internet was very scarce at that time, wasn't easy to get a hold of unless you were either super rich, or if you, um, pretty much, um, that, or if you went to the library, and that's pretty much it. Because it was a lot less scarce than it was now. Now it's very abundant these days. But, um, the reason why this is a fucking awesome ass anime, and why I love the fight scenes, especially when he has to fight that dude from the universe, he has to slice his hand off or whatever, he used to be from one of the, um, from the planet Jirai, which was, um, Ayaka's planet. You know, where Yoko and Ayaka, they always had, they always had that rivalry with Tenshi Muyo. If any 90s kids are watching, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you were a fan of anime and manga, like myself, of course. And another reason why this was always a really fun anime fight scene, I just really, really loved the freaking detail that they put in this anime. It was fucking amazing. It was epic. You had Washu there, the fucking space pirate, the genius of all time and she was only one of the demigods or space gods that were actually out there controlling the universe. We see it in another I think the Tenshi Universe some um, saga. I'm not sure what saga or um I think it was called OST at that time, which it was from or UVO or UVA, I think that's what it was, I don't know. OVA, I think that's what it is, yeah. I think that's where we find out she was like a goddess or something of the three goddesses that run the universe or something. That's why she was so intelligent with a lot of genius and beauty that she had. She was pretty much like one of the goddesses of Greek, but in Japanese form. Athena or something. But other than that, um, the reason why this is another really cool anime that I really liked is because it had a lot of funny details and styles of Ryoko and um, Aiko always fighting over Tenshi. And they find out later on Aiko was like a third or fourth cousin of Tenshi Muyo. I'm sorry about the barking in the background. Uh, other than that, another reason why this was cool is because um, we find out later on that she was like a fourth or third brother and stuff like that or sister of Tenchi there's a lot of incest stuff that happened here that's the weird fucking part I don't really understand it but that's how it was but that's how Japanese culture is for you that's why they have a lot of hentai and shit so coming in at number that was 10 9 now 8 now coming in number 7 now is um this one right here Zatch Bell the reason why Zatch Bell and let me tell you something people this is like a PS2 3 version or something the reason why Zatch Bell was a really awesome anime for me is because you know, you had this kid named Keo. He was like a real super nerd. He didn't have no friends. He had like a semi on and off girlfriend, but he didn't really care too much about her like that. She really had a fetish towards oranges and fruits and stuff. She was a really crazy psycho chick. She wasn't really fun, you know? But other than that, the reason why this was cool and uh, the reason why I liked the anime fight scenes in there, I can't really tell you just one anime fight scene that I liked in there. The reason why I love this thing the most is because it had this stuff to do with Motos, but in the Japanese version, it was just called demons instead of Momoto, so I guess that makes sense because there's a lot of angel and demon references to like Japan and Japanese culture and folk and shit, folklore and shit and mythology shit which I'm not really huge on mythology and shit, I'm more into conspiracy theory like alternative media stuff, but it's all good, you know the reason why this was fucking awesome as shit was because um they had their books to control, they're kind of like a human version or monster version of Pokemon the only difference was um there were little demons they used instead or like animals and stuff, or fantasy animals, like Pokemon. That's the reason I really caught my eye on this back in 2004, is a while ago. I remember I was just in high school, I started watching this shit. Some people thought it was stupid, others thought, for me, it was a genius fucking episode. It, it was like a small kitty version, which later on in 07, 08, I think we got Death Note later on. I wasn't too crazy about Death Note, but I did read the manga for it, so that was cool. But it's not on this list, unfortunately. It might be on an honorable mentions list, I don't know. And I don't have any honorable mentions for this one, sorry guys. So that's the reason why I liked Zashbo one time. He wanted to be a kind-hearted king, too, by the way. He didn't want to be evil and, like, like demonic as, like, the evil king was. Like, right here, I think he was the evil king of Zashbo. I think that was him. I'm not sure. He looked exactly like him. Beautiful dr drawing design. Somebody from DeviantArt did that one. But other than that, another reason why I love this shit so much. Sorry about that white list right there. Um, another reason why this is really awesome is because all the lightning thunderbolts you always throw every time you did an attack. So coming in at number 10, 9, 8, 7. So coming in number 6 now, yeah. Full Metal fucking Alchemist. That one and Brotherhood. Either of them are really fucking cool with me. The reason why I really thought this one was really fucking awesome and amazing is because this is one of the first, or I think second, probably the second after Cowboy Bebop. When I started watching Adult Swim when I was young, about 13, 14-ish at that time. The reason why this was fucking awesome and amazing as fucking hell is because they had these things they had to like, um, 
they have to use alchemy in order to live and survive because they end up doing the forbidden taboo of like bringing somebody to life they had to have equivalent exchange in order to have like something just as valuable if they wanted to know every knowledge being of the universe but other than that the reason why this is fucking amazing and awesome as fuck and um give me a second right now. shut up right now sorry about that ladies and gentlemen I wasn't talking to you I'm talking about the dogs but um other than that, the reason why this was fucking amazing is because they had these, like, full metal alchemist shit, you know, Edward and Ella, every time they did their cans, like, boom, they just, um, they just put any weapon that they put their mind to, it's pretty much the Japanese anime version of the Green Lantern, that's what it was, I think it takes place in 1907 or 1910 or something, it's like a fake parody version of, like, Europe, somewhere in Russia, Germany, around that area, and there's actually a movie based on that when they go into our real world, like, in Ukraine or Denmark or something after Germany or Russia, I don't know. It's fucking amazing. I'm not going to get into that. You can watch the movie yourself. But other than that, the reason why this fight with him and Greed to have the, like, fight because he wanted everything, he wanted to date everything, he wanted to do everything, he wanted to pretty much own everything in the universe. And I love this freaking drawing, right? Whoever did this, fucking amazing. You know, kudos to you guys, whoever did it, anybody out there in the internet world. Real nice-ass wallpaper. I actually have been use that myself, even. Who knows? After the Fluttershy, my little pony thing, though. But, another reason why it's really fucking awesome, um, after Greed dies, he ends up going into another body, which is this guy named Genshin, or Zhao. He ends up being from Asia somewhere, and he's like getting body taken over from one of the homunculus, or homunculi. That shit was fucking epic as hell. I loved every single bit of that. Even though my two favorites were, actually I had three favorite homunculi, which was, um, Wrath, Envy, and Lust. I mean, you know damn well why I fucking love Lust so much. She has it in her fucking name, besides, you know, the triple F, G, tits, and a nice butt she had on there. Even if it's an anime character, that shit was still fucking hot. That body was banging like a motherfucker, as they used to say in the early 2000s. And uh, that's pretty much the reason why I like Greed and um, Ed when he had to fight that one time after General King Bradley or something. He was the one that was actually a monkey, was too, because he would use his eyes as a full metal alchemist, or one of his eyes was like an eye patch right here. He, every time he would use it, he would summon, like, the Philosopher's Stone, which was actually made out of blood and shit. And they find out later on where his, their father was really evil or something instead of good. But um, I'm not going to get too many spoilers if you haven't seen that anime. It's been out for like about 8, 9 years already. So coming in at number so like 9, 10, 9. That's number 9. I should know it's number 10. Excuse me. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Actually, no, 6. 5, 4. Okay, and coming in number four now is Gundam Wing. And the reason why I put Gundam Wing, actually, excuse me, Gundam Seed. The reason why this is on the list, I thought it was really fucking amazing, well-balanced, well-thought-out. I don't remember too much of it, but I do remember a few scenes where they had to go in outer space, fight each other like motherfuckers. This is pretty much the Japanese version of Transformers after the 70s and 80s were done. And after the 90s, it got even way bigger. And the 2000s, it got a billion times bigger. It's from Bandai, even though Bandai doesn't really own too much in the U.S. anymore. They only kept it in a Japanese form, so maybe one day we'll get it back. I know this one guy. Shout out to um, For Neverworld and Bob Samurai. They're really huge-ass Gundam, Wing Seed, and um, Oblivion like fans. Definitely shout out to them. Check their channels out. One's got like 40, 50, 60,000 subs. The other one's like 20,000. So if you know about him, Bob Samurai, he's a really awesome dude. Definitely check his shit out. He's on my Nintendo Free, um, Sony Free 2011 channel if you want to check that shit out. I usually watch a lot of his anime manga reviews. Definitely check the dude out. He's amazing. He's a boss. He knows a lot more information about the Gundam series than I do. And, uh, yeah, the guy is fucking amazing. And besides that, um, he actually took martial arts, too. That's why he did Bob Samurai. And um, I loved all the fighting, the electricity that they used to show, all the rockets they would explode and everything. It's kind of like a wreck of seven, but it had a more of a nostalgic feel for me, you know? One of the first animes I even grew up with. So that's the reason why I love the Gundam seeds so much. And coming in at number three, if any of you guys can see this, I'm hoping the guys, God, you guys can see this, is, um, there it is, Cowboy Bebop, I think his name was, um, let's see if I'm saying it wrong, probably saying it wrong, I think it was Spike versus the other guy, I think his name was Vicious, yes, yeah, Vicious, and I know this other dude, shout out to Spike Jet 0928 he's really awesome, I'll put the link down on his channel below as well, the reason why this dude is awesome as fuck. Is because he would always get in the fights at the end with Vicious. And there's only like two adaptations to this. Hopefully one day we get a live action thing on this. Even if it's in Japanese and not the U.S. version. We probably won't get it for the U.S. But I remember I was talking about it about 10, 11 months ago. March, April. 
it's about to be year year old when I talk about there was gonna be a live adaptation film of this film. When I was talking about Bruce Willis maybe being in it, which I doubt or Keanu Reeves. Cause I might, if, I'm not sure if any of you guys remember when I did those Photoshop pictures when I showed them to you guys before. Um, I was really hoping that there would be an adaptation of this one day, maybe 2016, 17, 2020, maybe beyond. Once I'm around 30 something, I'm the old shit by then. But I'll still be a kid at heart no matter what. Even when I'm 89 years old. Still gonna be a kid at heart. I really don't give a shit with society. So. But another reason why this thing was really fucking awesome is because all the gunplay they used to show. I loved all the scenes where him and Vicious were going head to head with each other. It was like Spike. He had a, Spike Seagal. He had a really bad like um, evil dark past that he used to like work for the Syndicate, which is this gang Universal Galaxy organization where will kill people for fun, for living, and for money too. And they would just do it for blood money and shit too. And Vicious, he ends up killing almost Spike at the end. He ends up giving him a glass eye the second time he lives. And he actually had a girl from the past. I think her name was Valentine or something like that. Really beautiful angel from heaven. Awesome as shit. And that's why he always never wants to fall in love with Faye Valentine all the time, too. Because he always had, like, some sister love kind of rivalry towards her. I don't know. Same with the other dude. Um, Jet, he was really fucking awesome, too. But that's all I had to say on that thing for now. But I still got a couple more. The last two. This is number three, of course. Coming in at number two and one. I don't know why I keep bringing that shit up. Let me see if I can see it. Da da da. Ah, fucking. Um, let me get out of that. Down there. That thing's starting to become a fucking bother. Uh, number two and number one. Let's see. Dragon Ball Z is right there. That's number two. And then number one you'll see in a second. It's just going to be weird. Actually, no, this should have been number four and three and a half. I don't know. Three and a half right here is Dragon Ball Z. The reason why this shit was awesome as fuck. I loved every fighting moments of it. I was, your guys are probably surprised of why this is number not number one because this thing I know is kind of overrated even though I grew up in the 90s watching this shit in the early 2000s as well. Before I started watching GT and a lot of people gave a lot of shit to GT but I thought it was fairly okay. It wasn't the best in the world but fairly okay. The reason why this shit was fucking amazing to me especially my 90s kids and shit I loved every single moment. I remember the first fight scene I saw was a Raditz versus Goku. Because I didn't know too much about Dragon Ball. I did see a little bit when I used to go to Mexico a couple of times. But when I was still living with the family on my mom's side and shit. The reason why this shit was fucking epic as hell and awesome. Because the Super Saiyan fights, the energy ball, the flight, the blast. Everything fucking amazing with this thing. You could put it into one fighting scene. Most spectacular fighting scenes of all fucking time. Literally. You cannot even argue. As this is going to be as big as Naruto, because Naruto is still pretty big, in the manga world at least, but not that much in the anime world. But the reason why I love this shit so fucking much, where him, Majin Buu, Super Buu fights, so many of them, the Frieza fight, the Cell fight, Cell games, even the GT ones are pretty fucking decent, with the uh, Baby and Super Saiyan Gogeta 5 or something. I really love the Master Buu fight, that was my best fight of all time, I loved every single moment with him and Trunks and Frieza fight. Fucking amazing as hell, epic as shit. I know that Dragon Ball, um, ba Dragon Ball Z Battle of the Gods came out last year. Hoping to God that it ever comes out on Blu-ray DVD, I'm definitely fucking getting that shit. And it probably has by now. It's been over a year. By February, it's gonna be a year since that movie in Japan came out. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I loved all the Ascensions, Super Saiyan God, all that shit. Garlic Jr. I loved all the Dragon Ball episodes. My besides my best fight being. Not the best fight. The best fight scene with Super Saiyan Goku 3 and then Majin Buu or Super Buu. I did like the cooler fight. I only saw half of that movie. I never got to see the brawling one, but hopefully one day I will. I loved all the epicness that they had in the whip. Just the voice acting was amazing. Christopher Sabbath did a good job. Same with the other dude, which I forgot his name. They played Goku's voice. He was a boss. He was great. Hopefully one day he makes a comeback to making this anime again. Because I was a huge ass fucking fanboy when I had all the action figures the manga collection back in the day. Unfortunately, I had to give that away from Goodwill after I left New York. Real fucking sad story. But I still have one of the figures. Maybe I'll show it to you one day in like a special video. We'll see what happens. That's number three. Number two and number one. Hopefully you guys like that shit very, very much. If I can find it there. Okay, number two and number one. Yeah, number two is Soul Eater. And hopefully you guys can see the Soul Eater pictures. This shit was fucking amazing as hell. I only started watching him back in 2010. You know, it came out of no way. I thought it was amazing. Best fucking Soul Eater Society thing ever. No, I'm thinking about Bleach. The reason one of the best fights was with, um, I forgot his name, the Kishin versus the three kids, which was Death the Kid, Maka and Soul, 
And I know you had Liz and Patty on there with Death the Kid. And then we had um the one that always reminds me of Naruto. Every time I see him, Black Star and fucking the other one. I don't know what it was, but if any people have ever seen Black Star, him and the other girl, I forgot what her name was. I think Say or Psycho, I don't know. No, I never mind. I'm thinking about High School of the Dead. She was really fucking cute bitch too. Subaki, that's what her name was. I don't know what it was. Every time I saw Black Star, he always gave me that Naruto vibe because I was just expecting him to say, believe it. You've got to believe it. You know, that type of thing. Believe it. That thing. You know, I always saw like a Naruto vibe every time I saw Black Star. I don't know if that's just me or if any other fanboy of anime or fangirl of anime has always noticed that. He had that Naruto vibe. I don't know why. He always got his ass kicked too. Except he couldn't do Rasengan like Naruto did. And the reason why this was fucking awesome as hell with the Kishin versus the three kids, Death the Kid, when he does that blast ray thing, whatever, that spiritual wave, like, wavelength, let's go. That shit was fucking amazing. I love that thing so fucking goddamn much. You people have no idea how bad I fucking love that. And that was the Kishin right there, if any of you guys can see this. It was an epic, phenomenal fucking battle. I'll never forget it. It was beautiful, every sense way of the word. That was the one part where he shoots his big giant cannons or whatever. Firing his laser, and then he does that mean joke or whatever. Sick as fuck. Another reason why I really love this is because I love, like, the soul thing, whatever. And they used to have to use, like, their scythes or whatever. Like, Maka was really fucking awesome. I liked her as a mouse character. Him and De her and Death the Kid were my two favorite characters in that whole thing. If I had to say it was the best one, was probably Maka character wise. She was the best. But other than that, the reason why I really, really love this shit, um, sorry about that. I got the text messages there earlier. Was because, um, it had something to do with, like, not brother, like, Full Metal Alchemist, but it had a lot of good things to do with, like, um, had a lot of good background detail on all the other characters, had a lot of comedy joke moments and stuff, especially with him at the end, Lady Arachne, she ends up dying at the end, it's real fucking sad, but she was bad already, same with that other chick, which, um, I forgot what her name was, I know it was, like, the, ah, fucking hell, what was her name? Ah, uh, she had Poison Ivy and shit, kind of, like, she gave that Poison Ivy kind of feel, she was in love with Dr. Stein all the time. Medusa. She was fucking badass. I liked her a little bit, but then I actually liked the other one a lot more, which was um, Lady Arachne. Obviously, she looked a lot like Lust from Full Metal Alchemist, but that's just my opinion right there. She kind of gave me that vibe, too. I don't know why, but it had a different style of anime, too, which was really awesome. They had a deity or like a soul spirit of like um, soul. I actually know the sun and the moon. And that was really fucking cool. And I love that epic battle with the Kishin at the end. He ends up dying because of fear. It's like, I fear everything. Why am I going fucking crazy? You know, it's just fucking insane as hell. And uh, coming in at number one, hopefully you guys can see this very well. It's fucking amazing epic as shit. And hopefully you guys will be able to appreciate this very much too. It's fucking dot hack fucking sign, baby. That shit was fucking insane. I loved every single moment of it. It was fucking awesome as shit. I remember they had the Doc Cast sign like Junior for kids or whatever. That one was alright too, but I like the old school original one a lot better. The reason why I like thought Dot Hack sign was number one with the best fight scenes, which I really don't remember too well, but my memory's a little fuzzy in that, but I do recall a couple of them. Like the one where they had to find a girl or whatever. They didn't fight or anything, the one that was always asleep all the time. I don't remember too many of their names either because um a couple years later, eight, nine years later they didn't get soul art. Sword Art and Lion, so it was kind of like an adaptation of Die Sign. Maybe paying homage to Die Sign, I'm not sure. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Another reason why this thing was really fucking awesome, I love how they had a lot of MMORPG kind of references in this thing, even though at the time when this anime was going on, I wasn't a huge fan of MMORPG like World of Warcraft or The Sims and shit like that. I thought that crap was boring as fuck, I'm not going to lie. No offense to any Diablo 3, I thought Diablo 3 was really fucking good, but just not World of Warcraft, I'm sorry, no offense to you guys, but that game for me is just shit, it's fucking boring, I'm sorry, you know, I actually knew a few friends in real life that were really into World of Warcraft, back in my old job and shit, it was fucking insane, and the last but not least, the reason why I like this thing the most is because I love all the beautiful 3D virtual, like, adaptations they had, it looked like the same person that did the Inuyasha thing, the only difference was, instead of Inuyasha, it was a little bit more different, I'm not going to lie, you know? This thing was epic as hell, it was beautiful, it was well thought out, had a lot of medieval references as well. I really liked the girl, that really cute tan anime girl. She was really fucking awesome as shit, she was a badass. And it's funny, the one that was playing a boy was actually a girl in real life, in a virtual world. They had all these 3D, 4D kind of models, every time they would transport from one world to another. That shit was epic as fuck, that's the reason why I loved all the fight scenes as well. 
this one teleportation cat thing was always a glitch in the system. That's why he was fucking cool as shit. He was my favorite character besides the tan anime girl. She was sexy as fuck, by the way. And with that said, that's all I have to say for now on the top 10 best anime fight scenes and anime in general of all time. So hopefully you guys like this video and uh, I'll put all the links to the top 10 down below and I'll put some of the people's names that I mentioned in the description up top down below. And the first thing that you'll see, hopefully you check it out and you just don't pass by it. It's, that'll be kind of shitty. I'm just saying, just putting it out there. But like I always say, is what it is, ain't what it ain't. See you when I see you guys have a good day. Have a good night wherever you're at around the world. Don't drink smoke weed at the same time. Don't join the reckless. See you soon. See you around. Peace out. Ladies, goodbye. And I'll talk to you guys soon, all right? Be easy. Stay safe. I'm out. And uh, you guys take it easy, okay? I'm gone. Be safe. Be easy. And um, talk to you soon. Goodbye. Lates. And I'm gone.